This is your 4x4, and we're taking you with us on our five-part border track adventure. We're at the final stage of our journey, with most of this incredible track behind us. There's just one last section left before we can completely tick the border track off our list, and then we finish our epic southbound hike by heading off-road, in every sense of the word. Your 4x4 is presented by Iveco, Trek Hardware, ARB, Cooper, Piranha, Nava and Carryboy. There aren't too many corners on the border track, and as we rounded this last one, we were met by an obstacle that we thought was worth jumping out for a closer look. To be fair, we had been warned about this earlier in the day. There is holes the Iveco will be missing inside them. Jake goes, he goes, we get stuck in here. He said, they won't even find us because we can't open the windows. And all of a sudden, we'd have to kick the windscreen out to get up. At the end of that big June was an absolute surprise. Instead of things going up, there was things going down. We discovered some enormous holes. We came across these ruts that obviously over time have been filled with mud and water that guys play in. And wow, were they deep. Huge holes, ones that could swallow the Iveco and we had a great chance to just have a bit of a play. I dropped the Prado in, I looked to the right, and I couldn't see anything, it was just wall. Oh, oh, oh. This is deep. <laughs> Once again, done beautifully by the rain dump. Even sick, she did all right. They weren't particularly difficult to drive through, but obviously when they fill up with water, near impossible. And this is all part of your border track challenge. It's amazing country. Here, Alan, you're the oldest. Oh, thank you very much. Do <laughs> 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 you want it? Oh, oh yeah. 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 Sorry, yeah. that game doesn't yeah. work anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we brought along the trusty Hilux for this trip. I love taking this out in the desert. We've got 17 people on this trip. That's a lot of people to feed. We've put in a new battery system in the back, a bit more power. My cool meant for just twin travel body ovens. This is all stuff we do inside in Trek. We've put a lot more effort into the back of the vehicle. We really are set up. This is a kitchen that will cater for everyone. We sort of started to move away from the, the really soft sand and come into the low line tablelands. Whilst the majority of the border track was sand, sand dunes, south of Red Bluff was certainly lots of big holes really test the suspension on the car, gave the BP51s a real workout on that southern section. And a bit of articulation, and it was a nice little play spot, actually. There was multiple choices of traps, so everyone got to have a little bit of a play around there. I'd hate to think if you went into them and they were full of water without checking to see what's inside, because you'd be in one hell of a mess. It shows how deep that they can get the more and more cars go through it, and I would not like to run a car through there when there is water in there you'd be leaving it for sure. After our rutted section, it sort of the whole track opened up. There was farmland either side. Definitely a different contrast to what we've seen over the last few days. Made our way to the end of the border track and not far after that, hit the bitumen. So aired back up and ultimately started making our way to the little town of Nelson. With the border track complete and eight days of sand and desert under our belt, the group was keen for a sea change, so I gave them exactly what they wanted. After airing back up to highway pressures, we departed on a major transit along the border, down to the coastal town of Nelson for a hot shower and a hearty meal. But we just couldn't escape one last car park repair. Nelson's a very, very pretty little place. Reminds me a little bit of places like Robe or Beachport. It's sort of got that fishing village feel about it. Very quiet seaside, little quaint town. 
breakfast this morning and Nelson was nice. You could actually overlook the jetty, overlook the boats right onto the Glenelg River. It was quite picturesque. Being the prankster in Arnold Liam, I organised a small little rubber duck uh, to come down and tell the whole crew this was going to be their cruising boat for the day. Guys, I've organised a river cruise! Whoa! So you all got to get in, can carry at least, ah, I reckon 20. Too small, man. It's not small. The only one that actually enjoyed it and fell for it and really wanted it to be his cruising boat was Alan. Hogwash, <laughs> your service! It wouldn't be Mike without trying to wind us up or something along those lines. We've come to expect it on these trips. But he did then reveal to us that the proper boat was actually behind us, so we we're all very relieved of that. Aye, Captain. We'll be taking the little red boat back with Ben. Arr! Yahoo! Woo! Woohoo! He's screaming! Woo! Come on! Well, my name is Donald McBain, and my wife and I, and my son Harvey, and my daughter-in-law Heather, operate our cruise business out of the little western Victorian town of Nelson. We've been running the boats here for about 25 years. Got a little canteen on board, we serve tea and coffee, we've got ice creams and alcoholic drinks because the boat is licensed. And we usually seat about 30 people up on the upper deck and we can put about 40 down in the lower deck and out on the front deck as well. I do tours to visit the Princess Margaret Rose Caves. There are quite a few caves, but according to the National Parks, the uh, Aborigines never went into any of the caves. Beautiful cruise down the Grinnell River. Lovely landscapes, boat sheds. It was just magic. It was actually just a very relaxing cruise. The only thing to break the peaceful quiet of the experience was Alan from Piranha who was belting along in a little dinghy. He was having a fantastic time. From the ship to the ship, this feeling is very good. Because we were in the sea for a few days, we were just relaxed. I think it's a good joke. We'll come lean over and get you. And I'll hang on to him. <laughs> Yep, really yep. hard. Go! <laughs> Captain's hat's off now. Back to normal hour. We shot down the Glenelg River for approximately an hour to an hour and a half and we've arrived at Princess Margaret Rose Caves. The caves are 800,000 years old, formed by the Glenelg River all those years ago. Two local farmers, Keith McEachran and Jack Hutchison, found a hole in the ground and they decided to go down it. Keith was lowered by Jack with rope tied around his waist and he was lowered 17 and a half metres underground. Here we have our largest cluster of helictites. You can see quite a few that are different shapes and sizes. They come right around the corner, different directions, and we do have bigger ones that I'll show you. What a hidden gem this is. Magnificent to see the stalactites, stalagmites. There's even wallaby bones down there that have been there for thousands and thousands of years. So it's magnificent history. We've been underground with Brittany, who's shown us all around. It is a truly spectacular show cave. I've seen this 
，非常的好。If you want to come and check us out, we're open every day except for Christmas Day. I'm really going to get the kids out and, and get down into a cave. I was just blown away by how much was actually down in that cave and, and just the information that was shared by Brittany was fantastic. We finished the Margaret Rose Cave walk, which is really, really good. Looking forward to heading back to the boat and a nice leisurely cruise back to town. I put my hand up though to jump on with Al in the little rubber dinghy. Jake jumped on with me, got the boat started, and we headed off downstream. Absolutely beautiful river, the Glenelg River, beautiful and wide. Being a little tiny boat, we could go and check out all the little cave entrances that they told us about. Fantastic experience, because it meant we could get right into the limestone edge of the cliff faces. We looked at some of the old shanty sheds and huts and things on the side. We were on it for about an hour to get back to where we'd um, parked all the vehicles and left the boat trailer. We got ourselves there and we got ourselves there just in time. Behind us, in our high-speed open boat, was a huge big storm coming in. Black clouds everywhere. Alan and I pulled the boat up, we unloaded, backed the boat trailer in, got that up, tied it, strapped it all down. So that was a really, really exciting run back, lots of fun. Good job. I think everyone on the big boat enjoyed it as well. We'd had a fantastic and exhausting day out on our river cruise, but unfortunately, the time had come to bid farewell to a couple of our crew. <laughs> a little bit of something different on this trip. We made some great mates from China, Yun Liang and his wife. Being obviously the largest distributor of ARV products in China, it was great to be able to show him what a lot of these products were made for, where they get developed, where they get tested. Great to have such international guests come to our country and see what we do. And beauty about it was he actually taught us a lot while he was here. We'd pick up on the odd Chinese and we'd be throwing that in there. Mike was particularly good at that. Ponza! Two of us were in the car at one stage together and it was good celebration when we got to the top. The language of four drive is, is universal. Lovely to have had them along and make some friendships there, which they've invited us to go over there, which we might have to take them up on that offer. I have no doubt they had a great time and, and we'll certainly be talking about this fantastic trip for a long, long time. Everyone got back into the vehicles when we sort of shot off for the next section of the trip. The idea was to head to our campsite for the night. Following the tracks to get down to Pritchard's campground, which is where we were initially going to be staying. We got there, it was a fantastic campsite, really beautiful place on the river. Each particular campsite had its own picnic table, its own fire pit. River in the background, a beautiful jetty, absolutely idyllic. Beautiful overhanging trees, nice long jetty. The fishing looked like it would have been fantastic. It would have been brilliant to throw a line in. As beautiful as it was, it was a bit wet. And there was more rain coming, there was more rain due. The clouds darkened, the sky got dark and it really started to come in heavy. Some of the guys didn't want to camp in the rain. I was one of them, I'll put my hand up to that. It was a long, wet, cold day. Obviously we all wussed out because it was raining. We decided we want to sleep indoors. So we decided to stay at the cabins again, which was I think the smartest thing we could do. Once I saw that campground, I was half regretful about it. But this morning when I got up, I wasn't. Because <laughs> I was still dry. It didn't get to roll the swag out in the lower Glenelg National Park, but I will certainly be back to make sure that I do. Clambered back into the vehicles and we thought, well, rather than sit around, we keep exploring the area and we 
shot off and found our way in through the pines. It was actually quite a pleasant drive through there. It wasn't any difficult tracks, but after the rain, quite a soft in a few spots, but certainly a very picturesque drive. And the pines sort of ran all the way along the edge of the Glenelg River for a while, and then we darted into those and had a little bit of a look. Very, very nice, in through the pine trees, coming on dusk, all had our Narva lights on. The lights on all the vehicles have been working a treat. We're all running the LED 215, so very, very happy with those. Dark came on pretty quickly, which made for quite an eerie sight as the rain and the dark clouds and everything coming in. It was fantastic. We shot off this morning from staying at the cabins in Nelson. Everyone packed up. We took a few more little tracks. We found our way through some more of the little forestry roads that shot in between the normal bush and the pines. The weather cleared up a little, still a few showers about. One of the things you notice is the colour of the tracks. It goes from white sand, which is what we've had heaps of, to sort of black sand, which is soil. There's pine on one side, there's banksias. Beautiful countryside, plenty of emus, kangaroos, that sort of thing around. It was quite pleasant. We had a great drive through there. Not overly challenging, but very pretty and very nice to see. It feels very coastal. Guess what? It is coastal. Now Simon is very familiar with this area because his family was here for a few years. So he's been touring us through this region. He took us to these amazing caves that were just cut into the side of the mountain. They're just on the main road and you can't miss them. Take the time to stop, walk up the steep hill. It's well worth it when you get up there, have a seat and just take a look at it. It's just absolutely beautiful. We all went for a climb up and had a look through those caves and it was quite fascinating. It's like travelling back thousands of years to what the Aboriginals would have seen. You can imagine the original inhabitants of this area taking shelter in those caves and actually making it their home. Due to a bungy knee, I didn't get to see all the caves, but I got to see a fair bit of them. Climbing in is a bit like climbing into the teeth of a dinosaur, because all these things hanging down, it's really quite specky. I reckon I could sit up there for more than an hour or so just looking out of this beautiful view. Simon shared some of his local knowledge. I get the sense that he spent a lot of time around this area as a child growing up. Just like at the Princess Margaret Rose Caves, this is that vertical chute. It goes down into the main, main cavity. cavity. It's, from memory, it's about four metres wide. Yeah. It's about that high. OK. And, you, and you've got to slide through. Now, the best part of the day, more caves. These ones aren't just big open things. These are ones you've got to climb into. They're little tiny holes. That is, that is amazing. It's pretty incredible, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. can go this way. <laughs> Thank goodness Simon knew where they were and gave us the confidence to continue on because there was plenty of places a smart person would chicken out and wouldn't go any further because you can't see. But guess what? After that cave, there was another one. And that cave was really, really awesome. It was bigger inside. It was the main cave. And Simon found a really spooky way to get out of it. The caves are like the set for a science fiction movie. They're amazing inside there. There's things hanging off the roof, there's water dribbling down. There's huge fallen rocks to make it a bit threatening and a bit scary. We made our way out towards this beautiful spot where we are here, Bridgewater Bay, which is absolutely sensational. And to finish with these just magic waters and white sands that just stretch all the way down and around the bay, it's a great way to finish this trip. So here we are having done the border track and beyond. Unreal, unreal trip. To go back through the border track again, which I've done before. But I've never done as much of it as we did on this trip. 
it is a fantastic trip. I really highly recommend that. But always travel in a group as well. Very difficult to travel by yourself in those areas. You can get caught out. Having the guys behind us, I look at them as friends and family. We spend a lot of time together. Mike, if my belly's not hurting from all the food that he puts in it, it's hurting because I'm laughing at the shenanigans. Having Yulian and his wife from China on this trip with us, I suppose, give us a bit of international experience of what they see our country like through their eyes. I'd love to do it again, um, a bit slower and not much issues with my car. Having straddled the border from the northwest Victorian deserts down to the beaches of the very south, our adventure is finally complete. Time to go home and wash off the dust, get some rest, and of course, start planning to do it all again. This is your 4x4. We'll see you all next year.